lost him, Eddie. Not for long, Judd. Well, that posse's coming back. I'll be here waiting. We can't get very far with them. They're about windbroke now. Far enough. We'll walk them down the ridge. We'll ride them till they quit. And we'll get a couple of fresh horses. Where are we going? To a town a long way from here. A place called Ansara. Ever hear of it? No. Ever run across anybody who had? No. What's... What's in this town? Ghosts. Let's go. Time to get her the woodies here. Canvas needs mending. Pancakes are too well done. Huh. What'd you put in that stew, he says, Charlie. One of these. Your horse, old man? Yeah. Trey Jeeve? Oh, I can't do that. Tell you what, though, there's a wagon train camp down the road ahead. Maybe you can do some swapping there. Well, there's no need to bother them. I'll leave you my horse. He's worth a lot more once he's rested. No. That horse isn't for sale or trade, mister. No. Charlie, you better get that wood back to camp. Yes, sir. I'll tell the boys you're coming in, too, Bill. You in charge of that wagon train Pop's talking about? I am till the wagon master gets back. I'm Bill Hawks. You ride pretty close herd on your men. I've been watching you ever since you were in the Shadow Squaw Butte. Well, as you can see, me and my friend need a couple of fresh horses. We're willing to buy them if you're not asking too much. Like I said, our horses aren't for sale. But you're welcome to spend the night and rest up if you like. You'll be obliged. I can see tonight, man, if you gotta wait around. <laughs> Looks pretty good, too. <laughs> Thanks, Pop. We don't we don't figure to be here that long. Take a look at your horses. You ride them real hard, mister. Being watered and fed. Night's rest, you might be able to travel. Can't wait that long. Plan to be in town by tonight. The nearest town's Aunt Sarah. It's a long ride from here. You been there? No, it's off our course. South of here. Your horses can't make it that far. Look. You got a fine bunch of horses back there. You won't miss a couple. Like I said before, horses aren't for sale. If you expect to get there tonight, you'll ride your own. Charlie? Yeah? I expect Duke and Chris before dark. That means we'll be pulling out early in the morning. You better pass the word. Yes, sir. Duke! Hey, who's there? Oh, Duke. Leave you up for lost. Where's Chris? Uh, still in Fort Anderson in some hassle over that army contract. He wants us to move on. He'll catch up with us at Big Pines Crossing. What's the trail I got cooking in the pot? Rabbit stew. I'm too hungry to be particular. Something bothering you, mister? It's a guest of ours, Duke. Wrote in a couple hours ago. Figured they'll be leaving in the morning. Sorry, mister. Guess I wasn't expecting company. 
You ride in alone? Mm hmm? We were expecting the wagon master. Mr. Hale had to stay on at Fort Anderson. Come on, Eddie, let's get settled for the night. You know who that is, don't you? Yep. Judge Steele. Gunslinger. One in Nebraska and Missouri. With $5,000 to half a dozen county sheriffs, any way they bring him in. What's he doing this far south? Riding on, I hope. Heading for a town called Ansara. What's he doing here? Looking for a couple of horses. Told him we didn't have any to spare. Don't tangle with him, Bill. I don't intend to, Duke. Oh, you better dig in. I got some things to check on. Couldn't have been the rabbit fricassee. You and Duke both had two helpings. Man, if Bill ain't seen this nervous... Checked all the wagons. I'll be ready to roll in the morning. Who's guarding the horses, Duke? Jeffers? You expecting trouble? What's the matter? The cat got your tongue? How, uh, how far is this on Sarah? Five years. Life is like a circle, Eddie. You ride far enough, you end up right back where you started. We're not waiting till morning for a couple of wind-broken horses. We're riding out here tonight, and the two best horses in that corral. Slip back a long way to horse stealing, Judd. You know me. I was in hopes you'd leave here without causing any trouble. You figure stopping me? My idea. I, I, I told him we should, we should mosey out and get on your own horse and get out of here while you can. and three in a shootout with Judd Steele. Steele? You mean he's the famous? Bill shot a horse thief. So anybody needs to know. Yeah. Bury him on that rise over there. life. Four dollars and six bits. Old faded family picture. The gun that he lived by. What to show who he was or 
what he was or why he was. The man that I had to kill because he tried to steal one of our horses. You just have to forget about him, Bill. You realize what you're doing, Bill? Yeah, I'm going to Ann Sarah to report a killing. Bill, they'll be coming from all over to see you. The man that killed Judge Steele. This is as far as it'll go, just between us. As far as anybody else on this train is concerned, you killed a horse thief. It won't keep, Duke. You know it and I know it. It was Judge Steele that we buried. Even a man like Steele has a family, a past, somebody who would want to know that he's dead, maybe even somebody might want to know where he was buried. Sure. Half the sheriffs up north wouldn't they pay a good price, too. Leave him alone, Bill. Leave him where he is. I can't. We know what kind of a reputation Steele has as a gunslinger. He could have killed me, but he didn't. He didn't even have the hammer back on his pistol. He hesitated just for a fraction of a second. The man that wanted to commit suicide. Like a man that suddenly wanted to die. That's why I'm going to Aunt Sarah. Bill, do you know what'll happen when you tell that sheriff in town? Just like Charlie said, you'll be a marked man for the rest of your life. You'll be the man who killed Judd Steele. You two get these wagons rolling. Tell Chris I'll catch up with him when I can. Listen in. Can I be of any help, Mr. Bill Hawks? I'm with the Chris Hill wagon train. We're headed for California. Oh, Nathan Forge. I've heard of Mr. Hale. I envy you your traveling, your adventures. My job is more prosaic. You see, I'm the town banker. A lot of days I like to trade jobs with you. Where can I find the marshal? Wes Thomas? Oh, you might find him almost anywhere in town. But mostly he killed time playing pool down at the saloon. Thank you. Say, I noticed you stopped by the memorial. Did you know Captain Steele? I knew a uh, Judge Steele. One of the finest men I ever knew. I rode with him under Jubal Early. He was the state's most decorated man, you know, Mr. Hawks. This town will always remember him with great honor. Uh, just where did you meet him? On Old Mission Road, yesterday. He was headed this way.
Marshal? Yeah. Marshal Thomas? All right, mister, what's rushing you? Nothing that won't keep until you're finished here. Hold it. What do you want to see me about? It's customary to report a killing to the law. That's right, who was killed? Judge Steele. Judge Steele. Tried to steal one of our horses. I had to kill him. He's buried in a shallow grave just off Mission Road. He was headed this way when it happened. You killed someone, someone who was going to take one of your horses. Then you come in here with a story about it being Judd Steele. Now, what's your angle? No angle. I killed him, and I thought you ought to know about it. There's a $5,000 reward on his head up north. Are you trying to tell us that Captain Steele was an outlaw and a murderer? I don't know about Captain Steele, but Judd Steele was. I've got his horse and his gun outside. I've got his... Nobody's going to talk that way about the Captain Wiss. Hold it, Stan, all of you. So I want to show you something. Come on, it's only about a five-minute walk. Ursula, why don't you go home? I'll take care of things at the window. Till closing time. What does that man know about my husband, Nathan? Hawks? Nothing. It's not him I'm worried about. Wesley? He's in love with you, too. And he's a bad loser. If Hawks gets through to him, he should begin to suspect. I know. But Wesley doesn't know. All these years, Nathan. These long, trying years. Maybe it would have been better to... to have left town. Hawks killed a horse thief out on Mission Road. A man he thought was Judge Steele. Uh, he'll tell Thomas about it, and he'll ride back to his wagon train, and that'll be the end of it. What if he doesn't leave? He'll go. Why would he stay? I don't know, but I have a feeling. You go on home. I'll take care of things with Wes and Hawks. Yes, Nathan. once, Hawks, even a man like Judge Steele. He was killed five years ago, saving the payroll of the Blackjack Silver Mine. His widow lives in a house down on Alamo Road. After seeing all this, do you still figure to tell her her husband was a horse thief? You killed him? I might after I... After nothing, mister. Now, my advice to you is to get on that horse and ride out of here before you get into some real trouble. May I come in? Well, I don't know you, Mr. Hawks. Well, I knew your husband. It is important. I haven't been feeling well when you knocked. I was lying down. I, I'm afraid I'm not in the proper mood to welcome my husband's old friends. I said I knew your husband, ma'am. He wasn't a friend of mine. 
this was his, I thought you ought to have it. You must be mistaken. I don't think so. This was Judge Steele's, and that's his horse tied up out there. Oh, Mr. Hawks, I, I don't understand you. Are you aware that my husband's been dead these past five years? Has he? He was alive yesterday, and he was headed this way. He was coming home, wasn't he? Well, I don't know whom you saw yesterday, or, or what you hope to gain by this absurd contention, but my husband was buried. The marshal showed me the grave. Then why did... It could be. And these are your children? Yes, but well, anyone could have... Had this in their possession? You don't believe that, Mrs. Steele. My husband went to war with that picture, Mr. Hawks. He fought through many campaigns. It could have been lost, picked up by almost anyone. My husband is dead. You saw where he was buried. What are you after? The truth. I killed a man last night. A man with an old saber scar over his right eye. A man that was wanted by the law in Nebraska and Missouri. It wasn't my husband. Ma'am, he was Judge Steele. No. No. Whoever he was, the man you killed, let him lie out there. Please. I wish I could. <laughs> water for the both of them. Overnight? I don't know. After I showed him the grave, I thought he would leave, but he's still going around town with that lie. If he bothers you again, I'll run him out of town, Ursula. Oh, thank you, Wes, but I hope that won't be necessary. You know, he could be making an honest mistake. The man he shot could have called himself Judge Steele. It's not an uncommon name. Yes, it's very possible. Ursula, it's been five years now. A woman can grieve over a man only so long, even a man like Judge Steele. Now you know how I feel about you. I do know. But I'm dead, Wes, inside. I can give nothing. I'm sorry. charge, fellow. Not for the man who says he killed Judge Steele. Let's pin a middle on him, Rudy. 
You know, the one you got in the cigar box under the counter. The one they gave you after Falls Church. Uh, I said there was no charge, fellas. The name's Hawks. Well, now. Uh, Free beer ain't good enough for you, huh? you had. Why? Why, for your own good. Or at least for the peace of the town. By now, I thought you'd be aware of your error. I had a talk with Marshal Thomas. He told me you were planning to leave Aunt Sarah now that you found out the truth about Captain Steele. The truth? What is the truth, Mr. Forge? Is it here in town, in that grave up the cemetery, or in that story behind the stone monument? Why, Mr. Hawks? Why do you insist in involving yourself in this? Because I'm personally involved, that's why. And let's say that I wouldn't let a man, even an outlaw, lie in an unmarked grave. Now, you tell me, what is the truth? The truth is on that monument in the square. It says all you should know. Captain Judson P. Steele, war hero, outstanding citizen. What kind of a man was he? He was the marshal of this town before Mr. Thomas came. Before the war, he was a Georgia farm boy. He was killed on that road out there to the Black Jack Silver Mine five years ago. Not much of a town, is it, Mr. Hawks? Maybe it hasn't much of a future, either. But it's got one thing. Something to be proud of. Something that makes a man stand tall when he walks down the street. That monument. And the memory of Judd Steele. And no one, not ever, is going to tear that down. Even the truth? Why, you still think that the man you shot was Judd Steele, don't you? I know he was. War hero or outlaw? What was he, Mr. Forge? Go away, Hawks. Go back to your train. Ride on to California. You just leave us alone. You Sam Broderick, the undertaker? Yes, yeah, sir. Also, stonecutter, mason, any other odd jobs? <laughs> Would you like to order a headstone? Nope. Well, eternity's a long road, brother. Very few of us can pick the time of our passing. Hey, what way did you want it? You buried Judd Steele? Hey, are you asking that? Was he Judd Steele? Was he? His wife said he was. Go to Nathan Forge. You know him better than I did. You know him, too. I knew him before he went to war. And after he came back. Yes, I knew him. This man you buried five years ago, was he Captain Steele? What is left of him? What do you mean, what was left of him, Sam? How'd he die? Shotgun blast in the face, both barrels. He was carrying a $50,000 payroll to the Blackjack Mine. He didn't get there. Who found him? Nathan Forge? Yeah, Nathan found him. Took the payroll back to the mine. Buried Captain Steele. Mrs. Steele did the morning, huh? Well, not only Mrs. Steele, mister. All of us did. Maybe it's about time to quit morning. <laughs>
uh, talk with him, Sam? What did he want? Wanted to know how the captain died. Does that matter, Mr. Ford? Yes. <laughs> Saddled and waiting for you at the stables. Now get on it and get out of Aunt Sarah. And don't come back. Not here. Not to this town. I'll ride out of here when I'm ready, mister, and not before. Not for Mr. Forge, Mrs. Steele, or the Marshal. I guess it'll have to be for me, Hawks. You should have stayed with that wagon train, Hawks. You should have never come in, Sarah, with that lie about Captain Steele. You figured to use that on me? I should have brought along a horse whip. But this will have to do. should have brought along a gun. I have. Now get rid of that gun belt. No, no, not in here. Get out of here, Sid. Stay out. Town the back way. I don't want West to see you. Leave me about five miles out, headed for Mission Road. I don't think he'll be back. not catching. Here, take care of him. You can't stay here. I don't intend to, just my horse. Where can I wash? They said you wouldn't be back. That horse that I brought in here earlier, I want you to bring him out here saddled. Just the way he was when I left him. Judge Steele. Prospector says to her, it wasn't me that kicked you, it was Annie. Annie, she says. Now, who's Annie? And Annie the prospector says, Annie's my burrow. <laughs> Who sent you after me? I wasn't supposed to come back. Who sent you? He was only trying to scare you, Hawks. Get you off our back. I ask you a question. Who sent you after me? Nathan Forge. Where can I find him? He lives in the hotel.
You shouldn't have come back. Why? What are you and the rest of them afraid of? You responsible for that? I figured that Judge Steele's horse belonged there. You ought to be lynched. Is that what you want? Do you want the truth buried? You're wearing the truth like a millstone around your neck, Hawks. Yeah, and I can't let it go. I owe it to myself and the man I shot. I have to find out why he drew on me and then hesitate just long enough for me to kill him. You really believe that man was Judge Steele, don't you? There's a picture in there, Marshal. Take a look at it. Where'd you get this? Off of Judge Steele's body. I showed it to Mrs. Steele. She didn't deny it. The man you shot, what'd he look like? He had an old saber scar over his right eye. Why'd you tell me this before? Because you or nobody else would give me a chance. Where are you going? To see Forge. He didn't want me to come back either. Forge did that? Forge is a town banker, Marshal. He doesn't work with his hands, he just gives orders. Wait a minute. If you're right, I'll help you get Forge. But if Mrs. Steele tells me you're wrong, I'll help Forge kill you. Why, Ursula? Why didn't you tell me Captain Steele didn't die five years ago? He left me and the children. Left us to face our friends, the people who looked up to him, to us. Hawks is out there looking for Nathan. And if Nathan finds him first, he'll kill him. Is that what you want? No, no. No matter what you think of me now, Wes, I never wanted it to come to that. Then we better get out there and find him before it does. <laughs> What you're hiding is worth killing me for? Yes. I didn't want it to happen this way. I'd had enough killing during the war. I never wanted to kill again. You know, killing becomes a habit like it did with Judd. Yes, just like Judd. With him, it was always war. He never got over it. Never regained his balance, his sense of values. But what he was before the war is what matters. It's the only thing that matters. Is it? 
Or is it your hide that you're concerned about? I never place that much value on my hide. But there are some things a man will kill for, some things more important than himself. More important than the truth? Hawks, I could have killed you a dozen times from my window. But I hoped you'd go away, leave us alone. Now you've left me no choice. Nathan, drop that gun. Wes, I can still finish him off before you can pull that trigger. Nathan! Nathan! I told Wes. Yes. It was my husband you shot, Mr. Hawks. My husband who deserted me five years ago. Ursula. I've always been a proud woman. Proud with myself. Proud of my husband. My children. But he left me. Nathan, you covered for him all these years. Not only for my husband, Wes, but for me, for my children. And for all of us here in Ansara, tell them, Nathan. Tell them the truth. No, no, Ursula. Nathan, please. For us. Jet was taking the payroll to the mine that day. Two men, drifters most likely, they tried to hold him up. I was waiting for him at the mine. When he didn't show up, I went after him. I found the bodies on the trail where they fell. The payroll was gone. I knew then what had happened. I guess Jed had been waiting for this chance for a long time. But he was my friend. I couldn't let him destroy the people that believed in him or make a mockery of that monument out there. So, God help me, I used the shotgun on one of them. Brought the body back as Jet. You knew this all the time, Ursula? No. Nathan tried to spare me the truth. Judd was less kind. Two months after I thought I'd buried him, I received a letter with no return address, postmarked somewhere in Nebraska. I guess he still had some residue of conscience. 